I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are gonna glaze some yarn. Now glazing is a process where you dye your yarn and try to get the dye to strike to it really quickly. So that way the dye is really only on the surface area of the yarn, giving you a feel where you can see what the color was underneath, whether it's the bare yarn color or if you dyed the yarn with other colors before. Uh, I'll pop some examples of glazing I've done in recent months on the screen right now. Most of the time I'm inclined to glaze with say black or navy because glazing with a dark color helps you see the glaze on top of whatever is present. But I've also glazed with purples and pinks in the past. I've never tried glazing with a green. And so that's what we're gonna try today. We are gonna use Dharma's Forest Green Acid Dye, which is a deep green, and see if we can glaze some yarn with it. Now, a lot of greens sometimes take longer to strike to the yarn and maybe bleeders. I'm looking at you, Emerald and Kelly Greens, but I think that Forest Green has a potential to give us some really fun results. We are gonna attempt this glaze on three different yarn bases. All three of these yarn bases are 100% superwash merino wool, but the twist and construction of them is a little bit different. The first yarn is Knit Picks Twill. Uh, this heavy worsted weight yarn has a really high twist. It has a little bit thicker plies. It glazes really well. The next is Wool to Dye 4's Crazy 8 DK. This is an eight ply yarn. It's made up of four two plies that are plied together and it's very bouncy and also does glaze incredibly well. Finally, we have a single ply, super bulky yarn. This is Fluffy from IndieDyer.com and my thought is if something's gonna glaze, we're gonna have a good chance on a yarn that has a very thick ply with a bunch of twist to it. So I don't know if any of these are gonna work, but we have to try, right? I went ahead and pre-soaked all of the yarn overnight in some plain tap water with no acid. I am undecided if I should add some acid to the yarn before we put it into our dye bath, but I'm gonna try to use glazing conditions that have worked really well for me in the past, and we're gonna cross our fingers. I put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and weighed out 0.75 grams of the Forest Green Acid Dye. Then I dissolved this dye in just some hot tap water, so that way it would be well dissolved and we could use it to set up our glazing dye bath. This color is not a primary when I speckle with it. Sometimes there's some bright green speckles, but it does seem, if my memory serves correctly, like it might strike pretty quickly. So we'll see how things go. In my 12 quart pot, I have 24 cups of water and I'm gonna come in with our forest green dye we just mixed. It is a beautiful green, a deep green. You know, it could be helpful for me to do some research on the actual pigments that are part of the dyes I know glaze well, especially when it's a mixture. Uh, because that could just be helpful information to have. And I know now that what I'm gonna be adding is honestly way too much vinegar. It probably would make sense for me to use citric acid instead, just because it's cheaper when I'm going for this much. But we're gonna add 450 milliliters of white vinegar. And this is 5% white vinegar. This is a lot. Uh, one cup is around 250 milliliters, if you're curious. But I wanna stir things up. Since things are cold, I can stick with my nice plastic spoon. And now I'm gonna bring over the yarn. I debated if I should add some vinegar to it before sticking it in the glaze pot, but I think I wanna stick with my standard glazing process that I've used successfully with other colors. So I'm gonna bring over the 300 grams of yarn, quickly add it in, and do one raise, lower, that sort of gets dye all over, but now I'm not gonna to touch it. And so even though we're cold, which slows down the rate that the dyes strike, since we have enough volume and high acid, as those dyes come into contact with the fibers, they should start striking pretty quickly. 
And since there isn't that much dye total, we have around a quarter of a gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn, then it should, if it's gonna glaze, we should get a good glaze. Otherwise we'll get a medium toned forest green color, which would be lovely, just not what we're hoping for. But now I'm gonna take this over to the stove. And now that we're at the stove, I'm gonna turn the heat on high at first, uh, and I'm gonna set a timer for an hour. That's because I know that with this much water, it takes, it can take up to 30 minutes for uh, it to get to just below a simmer. We want to hit just about a boil and then reduce the heat so that way we're not seeing vigorous movement in the pot. And then once we're at that temperature, I want it to sit for 30 minutes. And so by setting a timer for an hour, then I know that we've hit all of those marks, but I'll keep an eye on it while we wait. I'm popping back in after just a couple minutes. I, I think the single ply is looking promising to me, but I remembered that Jacquard Brilliant Blue, is it Brilliant Blue? I think Brilliant Blue, not Bright Blue. I mix them up because the yellows, Dharma's one is brilliant, the other is bright of the ones I use. But I think Jacquard's Brilliant Blue strikes really, really fast. And I think that that could be a good candidate for a brighter blue glaze that I totally should try at some point. So. Since I'm saying this in a video, editing Rebecca will have to make note of it. <laughs> it's been an hour, and I don't know if you can see what I can see, but I see glaze, especially here on this single ply yarn. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Now's the time when we search for the zip ties to remove the yarn so we can set it aside to cool. I see a glaze here. Just look at that. It feels like you airbrushed the colors on. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. What's funny is that, and I think this is something I feel with forest green a lot, it doesn't feel as dark uh, as I've felt like glazes can feel with other colors, like purple. Um, this is gorgeous. I feel the glaze everywhere. I wonder if um, this is a color that would benefit from using even more dye uh, for the glaze. I think that this ratio that I'm using here works well with um, some purples and navies. Ooh, do we see breaking? The zip ties were new. Maybe I see some like yellows. But our dye bath is completely clear. Ooh, maybe there's like a rogue brown speckle in there, but oh my gosh. This is incredible and worked better than I possibly could have imagined. All right, I'm gonna set this yarn aside to cool completely so we can wash it. But we'll get better beauty shots once everything is dry. I am so excited by this green glaze. Now, there are, I think, not bear colored, like more yellow undertones to the yarn. Like there's a color that maybe there's some, whatever the yellow pigment is that didn't strike as fast, which is fine. It's just important to keep this in mind if I wanna do this green over like a lilac or something, knowing that that yellow will be part of it is just important to remember. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of dish soap. And I'm not anticipating any bleeding, but you never know. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything yet. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Oh, it looks so good, especially on that single ply yarn. I mean, I will admit, I have tried to glaze on some non super wash yarn, and in my opinion, those results are inconclusive. And I may have done another glazing video with conditions at work that maybe the results weren't quite right. So sometimes things work amazingly well. <laughs> sometimes things don't always work out. So it's really nice when you get a win like this one. But what I'm doing now is rinsing out the soap. Then I'm gonna put this yarn through my spin dryer to hang it up to dry. So we can come back and have some conclusions and see the finished dry yarn. We have three 100% Superwash Merino yarn bases, three different constructions, all of them glazed beautifully with the forest green. On the fluffy, the glaze almost highlights the way that there's like 
almost a hint too much twist in it because you can see almost like a barber pulling on it but clearly the color just struck to the outside of the yarn now there are some spots where we maybe have like a hint more yellow that's some of the breaking that you can get with this color or but oh my gosh it's so pretty the glaze on the crazy eight is not quite as dramatic but it still has that gorgeous airbrushed feel and you feel this pastel green beneath the surface imagine if you had dyed it with a neon yellow at first or gosh even like a lilac or something anything with a lot of contrast would be really really pretty oh goodness even like a fluorescent green <gasps> Ooh. I mean granted with a fluorescent green or like a purple or something, the color of the glaze on the outside that it's green, that might be a little less obvious and you might lose some of that greenness of the pigments, but oh, it would be so fun. And then twill is so bouncy that oh, you just get this feeling and this feeling is so nice. It's, oh, it's something that just excites me every time. Now, I can get this by accident a lot. <laughs> and so trying to reliably get it on purpose is feels amazing. What other colors would be good for glazing? Oh my goodness. I mean, my favorites right now are forest green, pink orchid, royal purple, dark navy, true black. But what about deep magenta? That might work even better than pink orchid because it's more pigmented. What about Jacquard's Brilliant Blue? Uh, if there are any other colors you've noticed strike way faster than you expect, those are good candidates for this. So if you ever have a color and you notice it's hard to work through the yarn, it's sort of sticking to the yarn before you add a lot of acid, those are the good candidates for glazing. Colors that take longer to strike that spread more than you think are not good candidates for glazing. But I am Rebecca from Cabinets and Sometimes I get a technique in my brain and then I'm going to play with it over and over for a period of time. Right now, glazing and resists are very high on my focus level, but who knows where I'll go in the future. And when I do lots of videos with similar techniques, I try to spread them out a little bit. So even though I'm filming conclusions for three different glazing videos right now, I'm going to try to spread them out a little bit so they're not all back to back. But Please let me know what other kind of glazing projects you'd like to see me play with. Thank you so much for watching.